Here's a story from IEA.org. SUVs are setting new sales records each year, and so are their emissions. Headline stuff, hang on. The large heavy passenger vehicles were responsible for over 20% of the growth in global energy related CO2 emissions last year alone. There's something very wrong about this. There's something very, very confusing about what policymakers, governments, and legislators want us to do, what manufacturers are giving us in terms of what's being available to buy, what we should actually be driving, and what the numbers are telling us. What am I on about? I'll explain right after this. So going back to this data, SUVs accounted, are you sitting down for this? For 48% of global car sales in 2023, so nearly half of all cars sold now are SUVs. I know a lot of fellow petrol heads out there bemoan like everybody's buying these big heavy cars. And again, it's a funny thing because we always talk about the weight of EVs, that they're two, two and a half tons. But actually, to be honest, we've been driving two, two and a half ton cars for years now because they're called SUVs and they're about that way anyway. So, and they're increasing. And what they're saying is that almost half of all cars sold are actually SUVs. It does make a lot of sense in some places, if I'm honest with you. I lived a lot in the Middle East. In the Middle East, it makes perfect sense to have an SUV because every now and then you will find yourself in a situation where you need a bit of affordability. And when everybody else is at that SUV height, which I guess is the argument for everywhere else as well, then you also want to be at that height because otherwise you're then completely swamped by these huge massive vehicles. I've driven a Caterham in Dubai traffic. Imagine that, you know, they would, they would drive over you without even noticing, you know. Uh, and you do feel quite exposed when you're looking to your left, right, and all you can see is alloy wheels, 21 inch. <laughs> so um, this report says, um, this is the trend, this is the automotive trend of the 21st century, the shift towards larger and heavier vehicles. Uh, they talk about various uh, driving forces behind this trend. The appeal of SUVs as a status symbol and the potential enhancements in comfort. Um, a lot of people perceive them to be safer as well. I will just make a point here, they aren't necessarily safer. In fact, traditionally, they've actually been shown to be more dangerous because of their propensity to roll over and stuff, you know, uh, because of higher ride height, higher center of gravity. Um, and traditionally, they, haven't, they weren't as safe as normal cars because cars were generally built to better crash safety structures. Uh, until now, most SUVs now are also conforming to that, but in the past, that was certainly the case. So, I want to go back to what this was saying now. SUV sales are expected to reach around 20 million in advanced ec economies, uh, surpassing a market share of 50% for the first time. More than one in four cars on the road worldwide are SUVs currently, the majority of which are conventional internal combustion engine cars, obviously. I mean, most of the EVs now that are coming in are also SUVs and crossovers and things like that. Pretty much all the manufacturers are just doing that. They're not even bothering to build small uh, EVs or saloon car EVs. They're all just going for SUVs. And so we certainly, that's, I think, making the problem even worse because we're still going for bigger, heavier cars, which is surely not good for the traffic, for safety, for the environment. But in terms of the environment, what they're saying is that only 5% of SUVs currently on the road are electric, um, but they account for a growing share of sales. SUVs weigh about two to 300 kilograms more than an average medium-sized car, and typically take up nearly 0.3 meters cubed more space, and emitting roughly 20% more carbon dioxide emissions. The trend towards heavier, less fuel-efficient uh, cars increases the energy demand as well. So obviously we're using more fuel to drive these bigger, heavier cars, which are actually using up more of the Earth resources. Um, so, that, so as I say, includes uh, oil and electricity use as well as demand for basic materials and critical minerals needed for battery production. Don't forget that the SUV electric vehicles also need bigger, heavier, uh, more labor intensive, more material intensive battery packs as well to give them a range that is decent. Hey, are you enjoying this video? Then make sure you hit the like button. It's very important. Plus, comment, share and make sure you're subscribing. Over the course of 2022 and 2023, global oil consumption directly related to SUVs rose by a total of 600,000 barrels per day. Wow, I don't know how they figured that out, but what a figure. The figure rose by 600,000 barrels per day just because of SUVs globally. Again, not sure how they actually worked that out, but that's impressive. Um, 
In 2023, there were more than 360 million SUVs on the road worldwide, resulting in combustion-related CO2 emissions of 1 billion tons, an increase of around 100 million tons from the previous year. This accounted for more than 20% of the growth in global energy-related CO2 emissions from last year. The annual increase in CO2 emissions attributed to the rise of SUVs equivalent to about half of the emissions growth stemming from the global electricity uh, sector. Compared to smaller cars, SUVs are also associated with higher indirect emissions resulting from producing the materials used to manufacture them. They're bigger, they need more metal, they need more stuff. And of course, that's more intensive and it creates a bigger carbon footprint. If ranked among countries, the global fleet of SUVs would be... So compared by country, if, if SUVs were a country in themselves, they would be the fifth largest emitter of CO2 emissions, which would make them more... Let me walk this way so that... Oh, the alarm has gone off. Maybe I can walk back this way then. Which would make them more than Japan. <laughs> I know, it's staggering, right? Around 30 million SUVs with internal combustion engines were added to the global fleet in 2023, comparable to the total number of electric cars on the roads in, uh, today. So 30 million in total in the world EVs, just 30 million SUVs, petrol, were added to the global fleet in 2023. Um, in 2023, there were 500 electric car models available worldwide, of which 60% also fell under the SUV category. Actually, I reckon that's probably increased now, not just in terms of the model availability, because that's probably, that's, that's probably dramatically increased because there's so many more EVs. Every other car that's launched now is an EV, but every other car that's launched now is also an SUV. So I reckon both of those figures have dramatically increased already in 2024. Anyway, it goes on and on and on. I'll put a link for this below if you want to check it out. But I think it raises some interesting points, though, that are worth discussing. And it goes back to the issue of, are EVs necessarily the right answer for the environment? They're certainly an answer. They certainly have a lot to contribute. And they're certainly important for our transport needs and sustainable uh, road transport solutions going forward. There's no question about that. But I've always talked about this race to move everybody quickly and suddenly to EVs, I think is a recipe for disaster simply because of the carbon footprint they were creating, especially in production of those EVs, especially if they're all SUVs. And actually, if you think about it, maybe what we should actually be doing is encouraging people in cities like here in Europe, okay, maybe in some places like, you know, like I said, in the Middle East, it wouldn't work. But here, for example, in the London, so if I look on this road, SUV, 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 I would reckon more than a quarter of the cars literally that I can see right now are SUVs. And I'm in Northwest London. So in Northwest London, you don't necessarily need an SUV. And don't forget people that say, oh, well, you know, we, have, we need more space. We have a family. We need to pack the stuff in. There were such things as estate cars. Some companies call them tourists. And they can come in so quite compact sizes, but they can actually be quite capacious. So the reality is that actually you don't necessarily need an SUV and you certainly don't need it all of the time. So shouldn't we therefore be encouraging people to look more, not necessarily at making that switch to alternative fuels, but to making that switch to smaller, more economical, less carbon intensive and less uh, CO2 uh, carbon footprint imprinting cars, but they can still be petrol diesel, especially as petrol engines are becoming so much more efficient. Anyway, it's fruit for thought, topic for discussion. I'll leave the rest to you and I'll see what you think about it in the comments and I'll catch you all in the next video. Yo, it's Max Turner in the place to be Motoring journalists fighting for the city's free Eleanor Rodriguez got my back in a mix Secret service still, she's breaking all the tricks Fox Jackson's on the scene, tech genius supreme I'm a device with the cars, living out the dream Villains on the rise, trying to take control Carlos Siddiqui, Victoria Hart, you're playing dirty role From the heart of London to the outer zones Fighting for the freedom, breaking all the bones the QLS files, it's the story of our time Riding through the city, gonna take back what's mine The face of deceit, 
The fighters to boys making schemes on the street. Max and the crew, we ain't gonna back down. Revving up the engines, tearing through the town. Protests in the square, voices loud and clear. From Trafalgar to the hills, we're fighting out of fear. Secrets in the shadows, truth's gonna light. In this urban jungle, we prepare for the fight. From the heart of London to the outer zones. Fighting for the freedom, breaking all the bones. The QLS files, it's the story of our time. Riding through the city, gonna take back what's mine. Less files, it's a tale to be told. Max Turner, hella know the team so strong in the fight for freedom. We keep rolling on. Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com.